Hi. I wanted to do a wonder talk based on a different approach um, to sort of the world wonders, you know, travel in because I knew that three other speakers would be doing a lot of that. And I think wonder is extremely important for all of us. I, at four years of age, was dropped off at um, Camden Council, which is an basically brought up in the state system. So I went through living at children's homes and foster parents. I learned very early on to run quite fast and also to box because it was the only way that I could keep hold of my own belongings. And also when the boys wanted to have dates with me and become their girlfriends, I would run very fast. And that made me think, oh my gosh, I have no wonder in my life. This is like terrible. And a lot of children, unfortunately, go through this even now. They don't have wonder in their lives. And I think, if you don't have wonder, what have you got? You, there is, have you got hope? Can you believe that there is something better for you in the future? Probably not. You have to have something, a vision to believe in, something that you feel that you can reach. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't have that. So how do we do that? How do we change that? We make sure that people, young, especially young kids, have the opportunity to see as much out in the world as possible. Obviously, not everyone can afford to go travelling around the world. So how else do we do that? There are, even in the UK, there's so many amazing places. Most of them are even on our own doorsteps. But no one takes the opportunity to just go out there. So how can we encourage this nation to actually get off the couch and go from ordinary to extraordinary? And it's not an easy task because people, they get up, they go to their jobs, and then they come home, eat dinner and go to bed. So what can we do to encourage people to do those extra little steps each day, motivate them to move forward? And that is, I think, through you know, challenging yourself each month to do something different. So it might be that one month you say, I'm going to meet someone new. I'm going to sit down with someone brand new for 30 minutes and just meet someone. And then they will add wonder to your life and you will add wonder to their life because they will share stories with you and you will share stories with them. Maybe a month after, you could say, actually, I am 10 minutes from the beach and I haven't been for six months, so I'm going to go and do a trip to the beach. Why not? Why is it so hard to actually make ourselves go and do all these amazing things and go and see what's out there? Why do we get caught in this mundane life? I don't know if any of you realise this, that we have the highest rate of teenage suicide rate in the whole of Europe. That, to me, is because they don't have wonder in their lives. And sports as well. I include sport in this, because I think if you're active and healthy and you eat well and you have the wonder, that will encourage you to see and do other things. Now, for me, I went through this whole state system of being a little boxer and a runner, and I realised that... I couldn't do this anymore and I decided to lie about my age and I went and got a job. Um, at 15, I pretended I was 17 and I worked in, of all the places, McDonald's and I'm a vegan now so that really does sort of make me go, ah! <laughs> oh. So I was there um, working in McDonald's, Argos, I even pretended one time I was 18 and worked behind a bar um, but I realised that I was better at playing pool. so. I decided, to, I hustled, really, and made money that way, joined lots of co competitions, and that allowed me to basically live by myself at 15. And I did that for a period of time until I, at 15, obviously I've got no clue about money, um, I ran out of money, and I ended up homeless. So I would jump trains, I would travel from one place to another, and while I was doing that, I actually got to see quite a lot of this country. I would just jump on a train to Portsmouth, I would go to Bath, all these different places, um, until I got caught, of course, because I was jumping trains and then that's illegal. Um, <laughs> so I had to sort of stop doing that. And I um, got to a stage where I thought, what can I do? How can I get myself out of this mess? Now, I was only a child, but I knew that it was up to me to do this. It wasn't up to anybody else. No one else was going to do this for me. And I walked past the Navy Careers Office and... I um, tried to join early, but of course they knew that I was too young. They told me to come back in a couple of years. But that, for me, was enough to focus my attention on doing something better with my life. That, to me, was wonder. The opportunities 
the, the potential. What else would I have been doing? I probably would be in prison right now. <laughs> well, maybe not now, because you get out quite early in the UK, don't you? <laughs> but, but for most people that come out of the care system, that is unfortunately where they end up. Um, it's quite a high statistic that under 24-year-olds, 43% end up in some form of prison and reform, whereas only 2% of the rest of the population end up in, in prison at that age. And I believe that's because, again, they don't have the wonder, the, the dreams, the vision to try and do something different with their lives. So eventually, I did get into the Navy. And I went to, obviously, HMS Rally, and I was so excited because I was getting three meals a day, and I was running, and I was doing all these things. And I got the opportunity to work for Admiral Black, who was the captain of the Invincible when the Falklands War were on. So it was like their you know, there and back with J.J. Black, an amazing man. And seeing how he lived in this massive mansion on a Navy base, silver forks and cutlery, it just taught me so much. And I thought, wow, this is how I want to live. Why wouldn't I want someone to make my own bed <laughs> and, you know, give me great food? And that, to me, was wonder. That just opened my mind to the possibilities. I then got drafted to a ship, HMS Fearless, there were 60 women. This was the first year that women were at sea. 60 women, 2,000 men. As you can imagine, it was a bit of a, a test. But you have to fight off the marines and the sailors because they're at sea for months. They, they, even, <laughs> the, the, they get desperate. It, it doesn't matter how bad you looked. I mean, you know, they even had a board, actually, of like who, who they would. This is how bad it is. But you got to see the world. And after two years of touring around the Caribbean, went to Bermuda, saw these places, and I thought, wow. So for me, having, having them opportunities to go and see all these different places showed me that if I could change my life by just being involved with different types of people, learning about people that were what you regard as better in society, and traveling the world, then other people can do this as well. There's no reason why we can't change our own future, our own destinies. And I decided to leave the Navy. I went to university, and I was a, a personal trainer paying my way f through uni, because I was a mature student by this time, so I wasn't eligible for anything else. And I then got asked to go and present at a fitness convention. And I was doing self-defense, because my boxing from my earlier days had come in handy. So I was teaching self-defense and also how to be a successful personal trainer. Now, because I did that one present, um, presentation, I was then asked to go to Los Angeles and present over there. So here we are, going to LA, which is amazing. And I went out there, and I, was, I, just, I liked it. So I decided to move there. And within three months, well, I went there with 100 pounds in my pocket. And I went into a gym, and I got a job as a personal trainer. And I saved enough money up, and I opened a studio, a fitness studio. Then I opened another three. And then I was catering to, basically, a lot of the A-listers in LA. Worked at Sony Studio on Spider-Man, um, Seabiscuit, a few other place, you know, movies like that. And then I thought, OK, what's the next step for me? So I opened a health club in San Diego, luxury health club. And that's, that's how you, you can change your life, just by adding a bit of wonder to your life. And I thought, that is something that every single person can do for themselves if they just have someone that will sit down for half an hour and talk to them about the possibilities, about wonder, about experiences. And I think Ed asked the question about, you know, do, do we have to experience it ourselves or can we do it vicariously through other people? And I think, no, we have to experience it for ourselves. I believe it's essential for us as human beings to go out and meet others and learn about ourselves, learn about them and also to see what's amazing out there otherwise you could just sit and watch tv couldn't you and just see what's what's going on in australia what's going on in um you know the island of sicily for example i don't know if anyone's been there but it's 30 miles from the coast of cornwall and that place is like paradise but so many people that i speak to have not even heard of it so why are we not finding out about these amazing places out there? And why did the human race not get off the couch 
and go and explore. So my challenge really for people would be to, I would ask and I would actually like some sort of response from people to see who, after a month, has gone and met someone for 30 minutes and had a good conversation and whether that has actually changed your life. And the second challenge is to actually visit somewhere new, somewhere that you've never been. It might even be 10 minutes from your house, but it's just somewhere that you've never been to before. I think it's important to open our minds up to the possibilities of that there is more out there than our little, little box. And when I you know, did some research in London, I was quite saddened to find that a lot of teenagers had never even left their borough, never gone to the beach, never seen the sea. So how can they possibly think that there's hope for them? Possibly the reason why we have such a high suicide rate, especially in males, when they've never left that box. So if we can get them out of that box and show them different places and also teach them about good foods, growing foods, eating well, I think that that will make a massive difference to our society. Thank you.